Hi, welcome to another episode of My Takes, That ESG Show. I am Srinath Sridharan. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Nanavati, a veteran corporate head on show par excellence. As his ex colleagues who are leading various companies around the world would say, Ajay is the quintessential post it man. The man who headed 3M operations in many geographies globally, including in India. He's a very passionate mentor to many business leaders and startup founders. He continued his stewardship to the cause of impactful innovation, responsible business practices, and governance. And uh, what a fantastic day to ask you this question of governance uh, to start off with. In your vast experience around the world, uh, and you have seen different cultures, different political ideologies, market practices, uh, consumer trends as well. And what do you feel are the key tenets of governance? And how would you actually explain this to a high school student? Okay, thanks, Srinath, for inviting me for this uh, session. And uh, I look forward and hope that uh, we can add some value to this uh, subject, which, as you, as you said, is fairly near and dear to my heart. So let me uh, respond to you first your first question first. Uh, you know about what are the what are what are the new trends that we are seeing? Uh, uh, what's changed in the world of corporate governance? I think one of the and this is based on my experiences in uh, Singapore, Israel, U.S., India, etc. I think one of the biggest positive uh, trends that I've seen is that boards are now migrating more towards going beyond just merely a sort of fiduciary responsibility to true value creation. Uh, you know, I think that is, you know, in the Indian context, we still, there still seems to be an overwhelming emphasis on compliance uh, rather than sort of, you know, true value add. Uh, and I think that's really a positive thing, at least the boards that I'm involved with, uh, we make it a point to ensure that this really is more sort of outcome-based thinking rather than just sort of activity-based uh, uh, actions. Uh, you know, uh, so I think that's one of the biggest changes I've seen. I think the other big change I've seen is a movement to encompass all stakeholders going merely beyond shareholders. Historically, the, the shareholder was at the sort of the center of, of everything that a board discussed or, or, or focused on. Uh, however, over the last uh, few years, and I think correctly so, uh, driven by trends like ESG, for example, uh, where stakeholders are the, the, has become more central than going beyond just looking after the shareholder interest. And at the end of the day, if you do the second, if you do the latter, you will do the former. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's not sort of, a, it's two sides of the same coin. Uh, if you look after the such stakeholders, you will in fact look after the shareholder. It's sort of, a, you know, to me, it's a no-brainer. Um, so I think those those are the two sort of uh, big uh, themes that I've seen. So Ajay, thank you for that. Uh, and I know the other topic that we've discussed many times is the word culture. I mean, as much as strategy as a word has been abused uh, last so many years, culture is a word that uh, almost every uh, HR expert wants to talk about. And somehow it's been kind of spoken much but acted upon less in corporate india and the sooner or later the boards have to actually start talking about culture and what's your view on that so i think that's another great great question you know i think uh, yeah, culture is often perceived to be sort of an intangible uh you know and oftentimes i hear you know what can a board do to influence culture it's really management's job uh, to, to, to drive uh, uh, culture, and I completely disagree with that. Uh, I strongly believe that a, 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 a culture, uh, the board can play a, a emphatic role in, in driving corporate culture. So for example, I happen to be on the uh, nomination and remuneration committees uh, of a couple of boards that I happen to be on. And uh, I'm, this is another area that I'm, I'm passionate about. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we drive, at least on the uh, committees, the nomination remuneration committees that I'm on, uh, is that when we look at the people, the next lines of, you know, of, of people, uh, one of the emphatic filters that we use is that does this individual uh, meet, pass the smell test? You know, he might be doing a fantastic job delivering outstanding results, you know, but, you know, if you don't pass that 
smell test. Uh, you know, it's it, 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 it's not a long time winning, long term winning uh, situation. So, for example, let's look at again. I keep coming back to 3M examples, which I will keep touting because that's the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, you know, and I think uh, if you look at this, to me is a so deep. It's it's almost like a DNA issue. Uh, you know, nowadays it become the flavor of the month. You know, a, a, a lots of people talk the talk, but very few actually walk the talk. And because of because it is intangible, it's not quantifiable. It is there is a subjectivity to it. Uh, it's not clear cut uh, black and white uh, uh, objective. So I think uh, it, it, this is absolutely essential for companies. If it, again, if I look at my own company, my old company. You know, how many companies do you know that have been around for 100, 115 years? You know, we have a, our, the corporate culture in, in 3M is what we call the culture of innovation. And, uh, you know, the culture of innovation really is driven by, you know, encouraging people to experiment, giving people a free hand, empowering people, allowing them to make mistakes. These are all the kinds of uh, uh, things that are going to drive innovation in any company. Uh, and so, you know, you see people in 3M, including people, I, even at 30 years with the company, I was still considered the young kid on the block. You know, uh, the company is full of 35, 40 year old veterans. And I used to get asked all the time, you know, doesn't anybody want you guys? I mean, are you guys, uh, doesn't the, so you, uh, people often wonder why do people stick around so long with a company like 3M? Uh, and it goes back to all these elements that I just uh, alluded to. Uh, and it starts, the leadership has to set the tone at the top, you know, so if, it, if, if the board is nominating a CEO and a CEO is found to have not been, uh, what's the right politically correct word, you know, a good guy or a good gal, uh, you know, you, in my mind, the, the, buck, the board is as accountable for that as is the individual. So if you look at all the global fiascos that have happened with uh, CEOs across the world, so there's not just an India ph phenomenon. Uh, and so boards cannot wash their hands off it because they were the ones who put this, these individuals in, in, in the roles that they're in. So the, the accountability is as much on the board as it is on the individual uh, to drive that uh, uh, cultural uh, example. So I think that was very, very valid. Uh, inputs about culture and uh, the other one that I know you're passionate about and I would like you to touch upon it um, uh, is the lack of succession planning or the formal succession planning in corporate India. And uh, it's almost like the immortal feeling that everybody feels that they're going to be around forever. And not much has been done even by the boards to take it up. And what is it that we can do better? That's another great uh, question. And as you know, as you quite correctly said, a subject which is uh, very near and dear to my heart as well. Um, you know, I think in some ways there is a sort of a cultural element to it because it's not in other countries that I've been associated with in the US, it's routine. In the Indian context, I think there are two or three uh, dynamics at play. Uh, one is, you know, we, for whatever reason, I, I guess it's cultural, have this philosophy that knowledge is power, uh, you know. Uh, the, the, the more I share, the less important I become or, uh, I, you know, and I, I said this to all my leadership. I said, guys, including myself, I said, if you get run over by a bus tomorrow morning, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, and I used to take, I used to take great pride in the fact that when I was running 3M India, that if I were to get hit by God forbid, coronavirus, for example, uh, you know, there were three people ready to step into the role without batting an eyelid. There was continuity, there was, uh, uh, so there was, it, it was done in a very, very calibrated way. So one is, I think there is this sort of fear of, uh, uh, of, of and I guess it's ingrained in us from our educational college, you know, it's if for me to win, somebody else must lose, uh, you know, whereas we've always looked for a win-win uh, solution. I know it's a bit of a cliche, uh, but you, you actually do that. So I think one is that, we have to really drive the, 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 the comment I made about my boss telling me that until you get, uh, if you, until, until you find a good successor for yourself, I'm going to have no choice but to leave you where you are. Uh, so there was actually a vested interest in, in, in driving that succession role. So from a board perspective, I think it's absolutely imperative 
Uh, and we do this diligently. There is a, again, as part of my nomination and remuneration committee uh, role where I chair that, that subcommittee uh, in a couple of boards that I'm on. Uh, that's the one theme that comes up routinely, uh, you know, and uh, so I think there is a element of having the need to that sort of we also have a very much of a sort of a rock star culture mindset in Indian boards, you know, yeah. and I've seen this too often firsthand that uh, who am I, who am I, I'm a mere mortal to question this particular individual who is a rock star. And we've seen how some of the fiascos that have happened recently have happened even when boards have been stacked with outstanding people, uh, you know. So I think uh, it's very important that we drive, uh, we have a, a formal process uh, of uh, uh, asking that question um, at the, uh, if not every quarterly, at least, you know, twice a year, you know, what's happened. And for example, I do a lot of work on, I, I focus a lot on attrition uh, as distinct from uh, uh, at retention rather than attrition that we have got to keep the must keeps. I actually look into all the exit interviews of people when they leave as to why did they leave? Uh, because there were huge learnings uh, in that. And as the old saying goes, people leave people, people don't leave companies, uh, you know? And uh, so I think uh, building, so you need to have, and in, 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 in my days when people stayed 25, 30 years with a company, it, you had a luxury of grooming, building a talent pipeline uh, over that duration. But in the current world that we live in, uh, where you know churn at the top uh, is far more prevalent, and uh, you know the role of uh, CEOs, it, the duration that they are in a job, has come down dramatically. So you don't have the luxury of saying, okay, yes, it will, it won't happen soon. I've got time, you know, or uh, you know. And the other fear is that if I consciously designate or identify two or three candidates as potential successes to me, that's going to create a lot of heartburn within the organization. So if you take on all these uh, nuggets of uh, various observations and advices you've spoken about uh, uh, corporate governance and corporate India, uh, now that we have a lot of startups coming up and some of these startups scaling to be bigger than corporate uh, Indian giants as well, uh, and yet the fear is when they move from a private unlisted uh, board play, a lot of these founders, uh, to a highly valued public company. Uh, what are those governance practices or the word of caution that you would have for them? So, again, that's another important because I am an angel investor. I am involved in a number of uh, 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 startups myself. Uh, you know, and I think uh, the, the, the issue for startups, first of all, the perception often is that good corporate governance is in the domain of the guys with the deep pockets who have a chief compliance officer or have a whistleblower policy or have a da 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 da. And they say, every time I raise this issue, they say, ah, Ajay, you're wearing a 3M hat and trying to impose those kinds of mindsets of a global MNC on a, on a small startup. And I say, that's not true at all. Uh, you know, I actually, you have the luxury of not having any bad habits, uh, you know. Uh, once you become, once you play in the big boys, you already have inculcated bad habits, uh, which are deeply entrenched. It's much more difficult to change a bad habit than it is to address it right from the get go. Uh, so I think uh, one of the key themes that I emphasize to boards uh, and again uh, to startups and again, it, it's again coming back to that tone at the top, uh, you know, you as the leader, you are starting with in many ways with a clean slate. Uh, you have the luxury which many big companies wish they had uh, of embedding uh, right from the outset a, a set of practices and beliefs uh, that will uh, actually hold you in good state as you, as you go forward. And I think the one thing that I now started telling the startups that I'm associated with, again, this is not just a cool thing to do or a nice motherhood and apple pie, but I keep telling them, I, let me tell you, my friend, that if somebody is going to come to acquire you, or you're looking to get shareholders to invest in your company in, a, in an IPO, increasingly, the due diligence is going to include the values that the company that I'm acquiring stand for. 
It's mm. not just about that I've been growing at 10x and, you know, and I've been, uh, um, I've got the coolest things since I sliced bread, uh, you know, or, I, you know, I've got this portfolio of intellectual property, da, 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 which is all part of a routine uh, due diligence uh, process. Uh, mm. But increasingly, uh, and again, there is data that shows that well-governed companies significantly outperform their peers. And again, this is not just anecdotal data. There is actually analysis done by World Bank uh, IFC on this very subject that over the long haul, um, government uh, companies that meet the good governance standards uh, will eventually outperform the marketplace. So if there's one incentive that's going to drive a startup to do that, it's that. No, I mean, uh, I mean, in a nutshell, I think what you're saying is, uh, don't chase Excel sheets and valuations. Chase excellence and values, and you will Absolutely. eventually get there. Absolutely. Uh, Ajay, fabulous conversation. And uh, as I said earlier, I mean, we could go on and on and on. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, parting words uh, for the digitally young on, uh, let's say, as they build up their careers to the youngsters who are building their uh, entrepreneurs who are building their ventures parting words from you of saying what should they be building values system based so you know i think we you asked that question at the start and i never got around to answering it uh, you know in terms of what would be your advice to a high school student or an undergrad on on governance you asked that question uh, at the start of this conversation and i we we got we moved on and the one phrase that i would strongly and this applies to even the context of startups or whatever doing the right thing is more important than just doing things the right way yeah. if i had to encapsulate it in one phrase focus on doing the right things rather than doing things the right way that alone that that will pass the smell test you know uh, the, the i i had a boss in 3m used to always tell me ajay whatever you do the one question you ask yourself is that if this came out in the newspapers tomorrow morning, would it embarrass your family? That to me was a great uh, true north uh, yeah. guiding light uh, uh, to question every action with that lens uh, 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 was a great uh, uh, way to determine if you were doing the right thing. You can often do things the right way and still be the wrong thing to do. Just because it's the right way done doesn't make it the right thing to do. Right. So that would be my sort of closing observation, comment. View. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, for fabulous conversation and your perspectives. Uh, I mean, really enjoyed it. Well, that's the end of this episode of My Takes, that ESG show. You can follow this channel on My Takes various social media handles. That's My Take with a double Y, the show that brings you various experts to talk about what ESG means to you. See you next week.